Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to the channel. Here I will share my journey as a poker player. Um, I will show how I improve, how I study my game and uh, hopefully some wins, but also the losses of course. Um, today this will be a study session, a session review of the session I played on Thursday uh, the 30th of March. And um, yeah, in the future you will see also some live plays, maybe some play and explains. And I will also stream on Twitch, which will be the, the same yeah, username as this YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so let's jump right into the action. As you can see, uh, the session did not go so well. I lost about around $340, but yeah, not a big deal. So as you can see in the beginning, I uh, the first few hands I won quite a bit, uh, including one big pot here. Um, but then, yeah, things uh, did not go so smoothly. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right in. Um, let's filter for all hands. Um, so, in the beginning I will start with my like three uh, biggest pots that I won and then I will share the three biggest ones that I lost. So, the first one is this here, three, four, five, six single suited. Um, so yeah, here I decided to open race in, uh, in the hijack um, and this is actually quite a loose open, especially considering um, the rake in these games and I decided to open also because the cutoff and button seem to be rather tight which is good for my hand because I don't want to play a multi-way pot here so yeah as planned these guys folded and then this guy 3-bet me so yeah this guy cold called which you should not do very often let's say um, if you want to play good poker, but yeah, I have a clear call here and I flop a rep, which is very nice and quite an easy decision here to just get the money in, basically. Um, there's not much other uh, we can do otherwise. And yeah, so he has the king, queen, five, six on the flop. Uh, so on the flop, uh, it is basically a coin flip, 53% versus my 47%. So yeah, luck will decide this one. And this time uh, we win. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, we can quickly look into a pre-flop solution here. So let's turn this way. So here I have um, like a study tool basically that um, shows me uh, how the hands should be played from a GTO point of view. So here I can choose the rake structure and how many big blinds we have in our stack. So here we have a PLO 50, which is like the closest to my rake structure. And now from middle position, we can, we can see which kind of hands will be open raised here. And we can see here on the left, all the hands we, that we should fold, which is 77% of our hands and on the right, um, the hands that we should raise, so 22.5% of the time. Um, and then we can search for our hand, 3, 4, 5, 6, for example, and we can see that this hand should be folded from this position. So I also think that this is a mistake that yeah, quite a lot of people do in these player pools. They like the low suited connectors, but yeah, they're quite often dominated, especially in multi-way pots. Um, so yeah, we should usually just fold this hand. If it was like a higher one, then we could, yeah, start to open raise it. But yeah, also quite marginal here. So yeah, let's go to the next hand that I won, which is this one. That's quite an unusual hand. Um, so our opponent starts with a limp, which is, yeah, not GTO, let's put it that way. Um, I raised with uh, pocket aces, very easy, and now he goes for the limp re-raise, and I can also show his hand, ace, 
queen 7 3 double suited so yeah he played this hand quite weird and i have an easy decision here and he decides to go all in which is quite a punt and yeah we like to see it because we have 69 percent equity so yeah he is very often dominated against the hands that i play in this spot so yeah um quite easy for me and luckily we hold we make the better full house so yeah this one worked also not worked out uh, nicely uh, next hand again aces you will see a lot of aces in my biggest hands um so double suited aces here very nice hand we go for the three bet and our opponent calls so we go to flop ace 10 4 um, again, these hands, the biggest ones, are not not necessarily very interesting, but I would just show them because they like they make or break the session. So I wanted to include them. Um, so here I just go for the full pot size bet because we don't have any straight draw, we don't have the flush draw, we only have the backdoor flush draw, but that's not enough for me to bet small here. Like I want to bet full pot and commit me and. The turn basically doesn't matter for me because if he calls he only has 44 dollars behind so yeah i will just go all in on every turn and we are up against three four five nine double suited and yeah this hand he should have folded um he should have folded preflop right so he shouldn't have entered the pot and yeah now he only has 25 percent and yeah luckily we win which is nice so now we go to the biggest uh, losing hands um so here in the first one we have king king queen queen double suited uh obviously beautiful hand here and we see an open a call and another call so yeah we have quite a straightforward decision here to just raise full pot um and try to get yeah all the money in basically um, but we don't want to see the re-raise because that means that he has aces like very 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 often like way over 90 percent i would say um, and against specifically aces we don't have good equity we only have like around 40 percent equity against random aces and against these aces we have even less because our queen is dominated and he has a heart and a diamond but that's not too important um, and I only call, leaving me only $44 behind in case the flop is something like ace 5-5 five five or ace 5-6 without a flush draw for me, then I have like an easy fold on the flop. And here, obviously, the money goes in and we have 45% equity. And yeah, because it's uh, the biggest losing hand, I don't win. Um, yeah. But I think quite quite a standard hand here. So this hand will be uh, more interesting, and I will go into some deeper analysis here. Um, so preflop starts out quite easy. We have a clear three bet, um, and our opponents both call. And these three way uh, three bet pots are quite tricky because. There's some money left to play for. I mean, the stack to pot ratio, which is defined by um, the amount of chips we have in our stack and the amount of chips in the middle. So we have a stack to pot ratio of two in this case. It's, yeah, quite a lot of money still left to play for. And mm, we are three way. So there are two ranges that we have to play against. So quite often someone will hit something on the floor. Um, so I'll make this smaller and I will open the training tool here. Uh, I will just exclude this hand, uh, this window for the, for the moment. And so we now go into post flop and we have here cash games multi-way. Um, this is the stack size and it's a three bed pot and we actually have um, do we have it? We have cut off this button with a small blind, exactly. That is what I was looking for. And Queen Jack Deuce is very similar to Queen Jack 4. So, as you can see here now, this is 
pretty much the exact spot and I'm in a small land now. And um, yeah, what I thought in game was I have obviously aces, an overpair and a double guard shot, right? With the king I make a straight and with the nine I make a straight. Additionally, I also have the ace of hearts, which makes it impossible for someone to have the nut flush draw and therefore giving me more fold equity, um, which, is, which is good. So yeah, my hand is, was in my eyes basically too strong to, um, to give up here. So I just went full pot and committed myself basically. And yeah, my opponent um, went all in. Um, easy call here. We unfortunately run into a set and uh, only have 22% equity. And of course we do not hold. But let's just see if this decision was actually correct. So we can look into the small blend strategy here. So now here on the right, we can see that 50% of our hands that we can have in this spot should be a check. 20% should bet half pot and 28% should bet full pot. And very interesting if we look into naked aces, for example, like ace, ace, three, four, that have like nothing going on for them if they don't have the flush draw. Let's exclude spades here. So we only have ace, ace, three, four without two spades and quite weak aces. So if we check, um, which we should do with these hands, and let's say the cutoff also checks in the button now, that's full pot. Then we should actually fold a lot of these aces. Like we can just filter for aces and see that 65% uh, of aces should actually fold here, um, which is quite a lot. So um, the majority of our aces are actually not very strong on this on this flop, which is quite interesting and I think some people misplay them. Um, so let's go back to our small blind strategy and see how how we should play with ace ace ten eight. And here we can see that it's a mixture between like checking mostly and then betting full pot. But if I don't have spades but I have the ace of spades then it's quite a clear bet full pot because we then have more fold equity. So we bet full pot and never fold, even if both of our opponents go all in. But let's say, this is also interesting, if we have a hand that is it's slightly weaker, right? Ace, ace, 10, five. So here we only have one gut shot with the king, but the nine does not give us a straight anymore. Here we have to be more cautious and either bet half pot or check. And the the goal with the check option from the solver is to stack off if only one player bets but then fold if both players go all in and the same with the half pot option if he bets half pot he's not yet committed to the pot so if both opponents go all in um, we should actually fold a hand like ace ace 10 5 which um, which has a gut shot to the nuts right we only stack off if we have the flush draw but if we don't have the flush draw, we should actually bet half pot and then still give up. Um, so as we can see, it's quite dangerous um, to play these multi-way boards because you have to be yeah, quite cautious if you don't have a very strong hand. Um, but yeah, in this case, I played the hand correctly and yeah, just ran into a very good hand, which happens. So that's fine. Um, so the third biggest losing hand is uh, ace king seven eight double suited so i open raise that's quite a strong hand and we get three bet by our opponent and he plays quite a lot of hands here uh, i don't know how good you can see it, but the 53 here on the left is the vpip and the 40 is the race so he's he plays quite a lot of hands and also aggressively um so it falls to me and i could four bet but I will not go into this option uh, too deeply now. Um, I just call and we see a flop of queen 7 5 with the nut flush draw for me. A great flop for my hand. Um, but I decided to check to the preflop aggressor and um, he bets big and I just go all in. Quite easy here. 
um, again not too difficult and unfortunately we run into the set that he should not have theoretically because this hand should only call and not 3-bet against my hand um, but anyway um, I cannot hit my flush so he wins this one so now we go into um, like the most interesting hands that I marked myself where I was in-game unsure how I should play them um, and yeah those are 11 hands um, okay so let's start with king queen queen 8 we will look at um, at the end but first ace queen 10 8 so um, here we see an open race in the cutoff and a call from a short stack player on the button and it folds us and here you can also stop the video or ask yourself like how do you think should we play this hand and um, yeah um, I didn't think that was uh, that I played this one wrong but um, so we have a cut off open and a button call and it folds to us in the big blind so we should actually fold here 76% of the time so a lot basically and um, yeah ace queen 10 8 I would I would say it's quite a good hand like it's connected and high but if we look here at the strategy the solver only wants to call if we have a nut suit so a suit to the ace and uh, in our case we um, we only have the suit to the queen so in this case we have it right here the ace queen 10 8 should be folded and I did not fold um, but yeah it's very interesting that you should actually fold this hand um, so yeah um, so now we get a good flop um, but not an amazing flop right we only have the second nut flush draw and a gut shot with the seven but the problem is that because we are multi-way uh, our I mean it's quite likely that someone has a king high flush draw not very often of course but it it will certainly happen and that's also why the solver likes to just fold this hand preflop I think because in a three-way pot the value of our flush draw here goes down because it's not the nut flush draw um, so yeah he bets almost full pot and yeah we have I would say quite a clear call um, but yeah now it gets interesting and here he again bets full pot and I don't think we have the 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 pot odds to continue here especially considering that he could have the king high flush draw um, so yeah we only have flush draw and the gut shot so I decided to fold here but um, I included this because of the preflop decision that I think almost everyone will will get wrong um, at these stakes so yeah I just folded this and I could have saved some money if I just had folded preflop so let's go to the next one um, ace queen queen nine so here it folds to me in the small blind and I open race to three dollars which is full pot um, and my opponent calls and here we see queen five four rainbow which is yeah like you can also ask yourself how would you play this hand now and I think like many players would just bet it and I think yeah it's obviously fine to bet the nuts right on the flop but um, if we think about how often we hit this board in relation to our opponent then he will have like more good hands he will hit the five and the four more often than us because we open raise a lot of high card hands in the small blind but he will defend a lot of small um, small cards, right? So he will have 6-7 more often and 5-6-7 and a set of 5s he will have way more often than we do. So we have to be quite cautious to Tio and I, I remember this. So I will just show you the solution here, which is 100 big blind single race pot, small blind versus big blind on queen 5 4 was the flop 
let's see if we if we got it here. Um, so we have queen four three, which is a little bit different, but quite similar, I would say. So we can show the small blind strategy here. And yeah, um, as I said already, we have to check a lot, 84% of the time, and only bet 16%. And if we have to check so often, then we often have to check our strongest hands as well. So a set of queens, for example, Mm, should be folding, uh, not folding, sorry, um, checking 70% of the time, which is like a lot, right? Um, so, yeah, we can also look into ace queen queen nine, which can also bet sometimes, but also needs to check. If we never check this hand, then our opponent can attack us very aggressively if we check. So, I think I played this one quite fine so far. And now our opponent bets half pot. And here I made my life easy and just check raised. And basically end the hand right here. Because our playability is not too great. If we, if a deuce or three or six or seven, eight comes, then we don't have the nuts anymore. And we are out of position. So we cannot control the betting action. Um, so therefore I decided to check raise. We can also look into this. So if we check and our opponent bets half pot, we can uh, see how often we should check raise and check call. Um, so we should check call 57% of the time and ch check raise 10% of the time. So a set of queens should obviously check raise quite often. And the ace, queen, queen, nine um, should also check raise sometimes. So both calling and check raising is fine. But yeah, uh, especially the flop check is quite interesting, I would say. And my opponent folds and we win the pot right there. Um, so the next hand, the king, queen, ten, nine. So this is like quite a good hand, I would say. Not amazing, but um, decent for sure. So I open raise in middle position and I get three bet by the button. And yeah, this is quite a clear call. We don't have an ace in our hand, which is good because he will have pocket aces quite often. So all our forecasts should be live. Um, and now on this flop, this is interesting because um, most players will not have a donk leading range, which means that they bet into the aggressor um, from out of position, which is unusual. Um, but in Pot Limit Omaha, you should do it quite often, especially on a board like this, where it hits my range quite a bit better than his range, um, because I play more of these high card hands here, and my opponent has more often like pocket aces, which miss this board, yeah, quite often, I would say. So we can look into the three bet pot here. So it's a uh, button versus middle position. So three bet pot, button versus middle position. And the um, flop was king 10 8. King 10 8 with a flush draw. And so we can have a look here how much we should actually eat. And in fact, we should lead 25% of the time for half pot. Um, so I I was quite sure that we have to bet around 20% in game. And that's why I decided to lead for half pot. Um, because I expect my opponent to, um, to check back quite often if he has only aces or, yeah, with a lot of hands basically. Because he is afraid that I have hit a strong hand here. And I... I did hit quite nicely, right? I had um, top two pair, which is great, of course, and the gut shot with the queen nine. Um, but I was not sure if this hand in particular is now a, a lead, but we can look it up. That's king queen ten nine, and this one should be should be a lead actually. So I made the right decision here. But yeah, it's it's very interesting to see that 
the solver actually wants to have leads here. Otherwise, in position uh, should be checking back even more. So yeah, a lot of our strong hands and then also a lot of weak hands. This is something I will not go into too much detail right now. But um, yeah, the weak, the weak hands to don't lead are obviously quite difficult to find. If we scroll down here, we will see hands like yeah, ace, queen, queen, jack, which is yeah, not very weak, but again, there are a lot of weak hands that we should also don't lead and then fold to a re-raise, but yeah, I will save uh, this analysis for another video maybe. So yeah, I decided to don't lead for half pot and he just folded. Um, but yeah, this part of the, of the game tree is someone that is, um, or like many players will not, will not have donk leads here, basically. So that's why I thought this was quite interesting. And here we have uh, the queen 875 and it folds to us uh, on the button. And yeah, on the button, this is an open because we are connected enough and we have uh, the position of course, in the cutoff, this would, this would be a fold. So here we open raise and we get a call from the big blind and we get the flop ace king six. And this is, um, yeah, quite interesting because, yeah, let's see. Um, I decided here, I will, let's show the hand um, before. So he, uh, he checks to me and I decided to check back uh, in game, I thought, let's say, like the board is better for me, right? Because that's an ace and a king on the board, and he would three bet like most of his kings and most of his aces. So I certainly have the range advantage here. But this hand, I mean, I only have the five of diamonds here and some backdoor straight draws. So if he has a pair of aces, it's very difficult for me to make a better hand. So. Yeah, bluffing here with so little equity seems a little bit counterintuitive. And yeah, only the flop is interesting because on the turn he bets and I fold. Um, but I looked this up and I will go into solution. So 100 big blind single race pot, button versus big blind. And the flop was ace king six. And here we have ace king five. Um, so he should check most of his hands or all of them. And now I will look into a similar hand. So queen six, seven, eight will be very similar here. Um, so as we can see, we should bet 57% of the time. And this number will go up um, if we would have raised from an earlier position, because then our range would be more aces heavy and more ace king heavy. So then we should uh, bet our entire range almost. Um, but here we can look for queen six, seven, eight, for example. And we can see that 54% of the time we should see bet this hand. And now we can exclude diamonds, so the flush draw. And we see that he still wants to see bet this as a pure bluff, basically. So without diamonds, but with one diamond, this is the key blocker on these kind of flops, whether or not we have the, the diamond in our hand, um, which helps us in the future to, um, to, to be more successful with bluffs when the flush draw hits. So if another diamond comes, we can successfully turn our hand into a bluff. And this small difference um, makes us want to bluff this hand on the flop already. In addition to that, we have a lot of straight draw possibilities on turns and rivers. So backdoor straight draws, so to speak. Um, any four, three, six, seven, eight gives us a straight draw. Um, so yeah, this would have actually been a good seabed. And this is a seabed that yeah is quite hard and tricky to find. But yeah, you should always look out for these spots. Um, yeah. So the next hand, I have um, ace, jack, eight, five, double suited. And it folds to the button who open raises. 
and I decided to 3-bet this one. And I wasn't sure in-game whether or not I should 3-bet this, but we can look this one up. It's 100 big blinds, it folds to the button, and now we can see the big blind strategy. So if we say ace-jack um, double suited, so these are now all hands that contain an ace and a jack and are double suited. And we can see that 75% of them should 3-bet. Um, so now we can also add an 8 and a 5. And then we have our combo and we see that it's a 3-bet. So I made the right decision here. Um, so I 3-bet and our opponent calls. And here on this flop, queen 9 4 In-game I thought that this flop is not so great for our range because we have a lot of aces that are if we don't have the flush draw it's not a great spot um, and we are out of position and the stack to pot ratio is still over 5 so yeah I thought we should check quite a lot of hands and we have the enough flush draw and a gut shot so quite a good hand but what we are missing is a pair from the board which would first of all give us more equity because we can hit trips and two pair but also make it less likely that our opponent has hit um, two pair or set which increases fold equity so if we had like ace jack eight nine double suited or ace jack eight nine with the spades then this would i would for sure bet this but yeah this i, I at least um, the thoughts that i had in game right so my opponent bets half pot and I could check raise here but I decided to check call. Um, on this turn um, jack 10 gets there makes the straight and I have a jack in my hand but I I didn't want to donk lead here because I still have a lot of aces and my opponent should have the advantage in in the straights. He should have more straights. So he checks back and now the 7 hits. And now 5-6 and 10-6 also makes a straight. And I was sitting here and thinking like, okay, I only have a pair of 8s, so I will almost never win this hand at showdown if it goes check-check. But I have the jack, which blocks jack-10, and I have the 5, which blocks 6-5. Uh, so I decided to turn my hand into a bluff. Uh, and I'm not sure how good this bluff actually is, um, because he has... A two pair or similar and quite often and he would need to fold this one and yeah a lot of players get sticky and don't want to fold these hands but yeah you can also uh, please uh, comment in the comment section down below um, and yeah share your opinion if this is a good bluff so I went for a full pot and uh, this time it worked so yeah was quite a nice feeling to get this one through um, yeah, so let's go into the uh, analysis here. Um, so post flop, 100 big blinds, 3 bet pot, button versus small blind. Um, so the flop was um, queen 9 4. We have queen 9 deuce here with a flush draw. Um, and here we can look into the strategy um, and here it was something that yeah I uh, I remembered wrong or I got wrong in game um, it is that we only need to check 19% of the time um, and we can actually bet like the other 81% mainly for half pot but also some full pot um, so yeah this board is actually better for our range than I um, than I thought because in our small band 3 betting range we not only have aces but we have also quite um, quite a few more hands that that interact with this bot quite well like hands like uh, ace jack 10 5 double suited or uh, king queen jack 10 single suited those are also hands that we 3 bet so yeah we hit this bot quite a bit and our opponent because he raised from the button, he also will have like hands like 3, 4, 5, 6 or um, jack 5, 6, 7 
um, or ace554, hands like these that completely miss the board. And against those hands we can bet half pot for value and also as a bluff quite quite nicely. So if we can, if we filter for ace jack 85 with spades, with the ace of spades, so spades and the nut flush draw, we see that the solver wants to bet half pot and stack off uh, against, uh, against a raise from the button. It's important to note that we are in this solution on the flop quite a bit deeper. So here we have 88 in relation to 24 and here we have 116 in relation to 2023. Um, so because we have more money in our stack, we should be more cautious when being out of out of position. So I think the checking frequency would go up a little bit, but still, I want to I want to bet this hand. Like, um, um, yeah, not be afraid of of a monster in our opponent's hand, and just yeah, go with it and play the hand a bit more aggressively, which um, is something that you will see in in some of the future hands as well. That yeah, I played them too cautiously and should be like a little bit more aggressive with them and just yeah push my equity and get my opponent to fold. And if he decides to to go all in, then so be it. Like we still have a lot of equity here. Um, so yeah, I would say this was yeah quite a mistake from my end. And the next time I want to see that this hand on the flop. Um, so the next hand has a similar kind of theme. Um, we have the ace, ace, queen, jack. And uh, we see an open raise from early position and go for a three bet, which is standard. Um, so um, our opponent calls and this flop comes and uh, it's basically the like the same story as before in, in the sense that I thought that this board was quite bad for us. Um, because he has a lot more like king jack and pocket kings and we have a lot more aces, right? Um, so let's look into the solution here or yeah, let's, let's first show how I played the hand. Let's do it that way. So I decided to check and my opponent bet half pot and I decided to call. Um, so I have a, a jack blocker a gut shot to the nuts and the ace of clubs. So quite a lot of um, a lot of cards in our hand that interact with the board here. So yeah, I decided to check call, and then on the turn I checked and he bet this sizing. And here I would call in the hopes of either hitting a jack or a ten. And also if a club hits, I would need to bluff this hand. Um, but I decided to check fold, which is quite weak, I would say. And I I don't like the way I played this hand, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Let's look into this one. So he raised from early position. We are in a small blind. And the flop is king, jack, eight. So we have a king, jack, seven here. Um, And we can see that we should check quite a lot, 52%, um, and then bet half pot the, yeah, the majority uh, of the time we don't check, basically. Um, so aces we have to check quite often here. And also check fold a bunch if we have nothing. Um, but if we have the ace, ace, queen, jack, we should actually bet quite a lot. Um, if we don't have the flush draw, but have the ace of diamonds, then we see that we should only check 26% of the time and sometimes even bet full pot and commit ourselves or bet half pot and still stack off. And um, yeah, in this instance, I would again have liked to see myself bet uh, either full pot or half pot. I think both is fine. But going for the check call is, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't like it so much because we go into this like check call defensive mode where we yeah we we don't have control over the pot anymore and we cannot make our opponent fold which is 
a big part of the game, especially in Omaha, because all the players have so much equity that it's almost always great to see the opponent fold unless you have like a monster hand. So yeah, I would like to play this more aggressively in the future. So yeah, this is for this hand. And the next hand I have ace-jack-5-4 double suited. And here I open raised in the cutoff and got three bet by the button. And yeah, I decided to call here. And the flop is 10-9-6. And that is a board that is um, very dangerous for the button player and quite good for me. So I thought about uh, leading in game here, but I decided to go for a check. Then my opponent bet half pot and I called um, with my bare nut flush draw. And here on the king, I, I hit a gut shot as well. So with the queen, I make a straight. And my opponent bets half pot, which is a weird sizing here. Um, he basically gives me the pot odds that I have, um, that I need, with the nut flush draw and the gut shot. So I decided to do that, to try to hit the diamond. And uh, I got lucky here. And yeah, I decided to donk bet, full pot. And he folded. But let's go back to the flop. So should I actually lead or not is the question here, right? Um, so we look into a three bet pot, button versus cut off. And I was sure that we should um, lead some hands, but I was not sure about um, which hands exactly we should lead. So we have 1097, which is um, quite a bit more dangerous. Let's look at 1076. That's quite, quite similar. Um, so show cutoff. And we see that we should lead 40% of the time. So it's a huge part of the strategy and we should definitely lead some hands here. And the nut flush draw is of course um, a hand that we should often lead um, because it's just very strong. And here we see it, 72% of the time we should lead with the nut flush draw. Um, especially if we have nothing with it. Like if we have the, um, let's say we have with ace, queen, jack, five. So the naked nut flush draw. Um, we should sometimes bet it and sometimes check it, but yeah, definitely betting is part of the strategy. And in this case, again, I think betting is quite interesting because yeah, we can stack off if our opponent decides to, to go all in. And yeah, we just, make him fold a lot of hands, which is, which is again, quite good, I would say. Um, maybe we should lead if we had some more components, like um, ace, queen, jack, six, for example. Um, yeah, this hand wants to lead more often because we have more equity. Um, but yeah, again, here I think a lead is, is, is not a bad thing, but yeah, I don't mind it. But yeah, it's important to keep in mind that you always uh, think about your donk betting range here, I think. So let's go to the next hand, which is this one. And I will not go into too much detail here, but yeah, I wanted to show it anyway. So I open raise here, which is quite marginal in the first place. And with an active player on the button, I would prefer to see myself fold here. But I open raised, the button called. And we are heads up on the flop. And on this kind of flop, I want to check a lot out of position. So I did that and he bets slightly over half pot. And I decided to check call with my open-ended straight draw, pair of sixes and backdoor flush draw. And the turn went check, check. And here again, I saw a bluffing opportunity. So five, eight is a straight and five, three is a straight. Um, and he checked back the turn, so he's he pretty much will never have like a set of jacks or a set of queens. Um, so and I have the five blocker here, so I block the straight. Um, 
and I only have a pair of sixes, so I have no showdown value basically. So I decided to bluff this one. And yeah, again, you can feel free to uh, comment in the comment section. Um, uh, and this time it was successful. So again, quite nice to get this one through. Um, here another hand that we had a similar hand actually. Um, here I open rest on the button. Queen 8, 5, 5, double suited, and our opponent defends in the big blind. And we have a flop of ace, jack, 3. So, again, we have very little uh, possibilities to, to improve in case our opponent has like a pair of aces, even. But we have two backdoor flush draws and two 5 outs that we can hit for, for quite a strong set. And yeah, in this case, I decided to C bet. And we can see later if this was the correct decision or not. And my opponent called here. And here on the turn, um, he checked to me and I picked up a flush draw here, but it's only an 8 high flush draw um, and nothing else really. We don't have a pair from the board, so we don't block our opponent's strongest hands. Um, and our flush draw is very low, so in case our opponent also picked up a higher flush draw, we want to pot control more. And if we had a higher flush draw, we would bet more likely. Or we, we would be more likely to bet, rather. Um, so uh, I checked back here with my equity. If I bet and he would check raise, then I would need to fold, which would be really bad. And then the four hits. So I have the perfect straight blockers here and my opponent checks. So, yeah. Um, I would say it's quite a clear bet in hindsight, but I check back, which I hate, uh, actually, because our opponent showed quite a bit of weakness because he checked on the river. So he did not check raise the flop and he didn't bet the turn and he didn't bet the river. So. How often does he really have a very strong hand here? And then I also have the best blockers to the straight and I have no showdown value at all. So yeah, this is quite a clear bluff on the river. Um, but I checked back and of course lost the hand with only a pair of fives. But we can have a look here on ace jack three in a single raised pot if we should even see that this in the first place. Um, yeah, so we have ace jack three rainbow and our opponent should check everything and now we are on the button. And yeah, the strategy for c betting here is quite interesting because we have to c bet a lot of air that is, that has basically no blocker from the board but still wants to c bet. And a hand like queen eight five five is actually one of these hands. So here I found the, the light seabed, um, which is great. And yeah, we should also seabed quite, uh, quite some other marginal hands. Hands like, I mean, I didn't look this up, but um, queens with a three, for example, I would see like as a seabed. Here we are, queen, queen, five, three, which is also quite marginal, right? Against any ace where we have very little equity, but yeah. Um, I think I will go into more depth in like future we videos or maybe some yeah live study sessions, but I don't want to make this video too too long. Um, so yeah, it was a good seabed by me. And then on the turn, the six of clubs. Um, he should check everything, and now we can look into our strategy. And the queen. Let's wait for the for my computer to uh, catch up. Queen eight five five um, should always check back or almost always here. But yeah, we can see that yeah the even the even with the queen high flush draw we should check back most often. Um, so yeah, this decision was correct by me. But then on the river, if the, let's say, four of hearts comes, 
um, we should definitely definitely bluff our hand here um, so just to verify this queen eight five five is like yeah one of the greatest bluff or one of the best bluffs we can we can ever have here in this spot I think so yeah I'm yeah not very happy how I played this hand but uh, anyway um, this ace is 10 8 hand I already showed this one so let's get to the last hand which is a small hand but I think interesting nonetheless so we have king queen queen 8 on the button so very clear open and our opponent calls so we again have a single raised pot and this time we have the 10 7 6 with a flush draw and yeah, we have a decision to seabed or not to seabed. So I thought I have the eight of clubs, which blocks the, the straight, eight, nine. And I have the queen of diamonds. So I have some blockers with the diamond and the straight blocker. Um, but I decided that it was not enough to seabed here. And then when my opponent bets on the turn, I have an easy fold. But yeah, let's go into some more detail here. So single raised pot button versus big blind. We go back to the to the flop. Um, so ten seven six. I think we got this one. Yes, we do. Um, so if our opponent checks, let's first of all. That's also quite interesting. He should have donk leads here. Twenty percent, which is significant, and almost nobody does this. Even myself, I have not yet looked into this part of the strategy. Um, but yeah, let's just show the button strategy here. Um, and we should bet half pot 50% of the time. And yeah, the king, queen, queen, eight, for example, without two spades, so without the flush draw, should bet quite a lot here, 69% of the time. And if we have one spade, um, then we should see bet every single time. So, yeah, this is a seabed that I missed, and I think I miss a lot of seabeds on this board. So I decided to work on this a bit more, and um, we will do something different now. We will actually actually uh, use the train feature here. So um, the the program will give me random hands that I could have in these spots. So hands that I open race on the button um, and I have to decide now whether I want to check or bet these hands and I will go over maybe um, 20, 20 hands 20 or 30 maybe and yeah you can also like think about the hands and yeah maybe stop the video what what you think about the hands so yeah let's jump right in here we have bottom two pair and an eight high flush draw so that's a, that's a difficult one already. Um, I would check this back because our flush draw is only eight high and we only have bottom two pair. So yeah, okay, that was a mistake right off the bat, but that happens. So ace, king, nine, five. We have basically nothing but again the nine blocker. So this time I would see that this hand, but I'm again wrong. So as you can see, these are quite quite difficult, um, especially if you haven't done the quiz already. I did some yesterday, but yeah, apparently not enough. So queen, queen, nine, three. Uh, in this instance, we have the queen of spades, which gives us additional fold equity. So to explain this a little bit more, we have three kinds of blockers that are important here on this board. Either a spade, uh, a 10, seven or six, so the pair blockers, and then an eight or a nine. So, these cards are interesting to, to bet here. And I think here we have the Queen of Spades and the Nine of Diamonds. So I want to bet this one, which is correct. So um, here in this hand, we have a very strong hand, a King High Flutter and a set, which yeah will surely be a bet. Here we have, don't have enough, I think, to bet. So I'll go for a check. And this one, I'm not sure honestly, but I would go for a C bet because we have the nut flusher and a six blocker, and it's correct. Nice. 
Um, top set will almost always be a seabed, especially if we block the 8 nines trade. We just get too much value from a set of 7s or 6s or other hands, so yeah. Um, now it gets, yeah, this one I'm unsure about. We don't have an 8, we don't have a 9, but we do have a 7 and a queen of spades. So this could be one of the thin seabeds. Um, yeah, let's go for it. I'm not sure. Yeah, so these hands are quite difficult to see bet, especially in game. Um, Ace King seven six. That's a clear check back with bottom two pair. Bottom two pair wants to pot control here almost always. Um, here we have the straight, which will be mostly a bet. Here we have the nine blocker, a king high flush draw, and a backdoor flush draw. So I think this is just a sea bet. Yeah, nice. Um, Ace ten nine five, I would say, is a C bet. We have the ten blocker and a nine blocker. So although we don't have a spade, which is not great. Yeah. Okay. So apparently he wants to check back because we don't have a spade. Here we can look this up. Ace ten nine five without any spade is a check back ninety percent of the time. But if we filter for no flush draw but one spade then we can see he wants to see bet 85% of the time. So um, you have to be very, very um, attentive to these slight differences in your hand. So yeah, that's quite difficult. Um, here we have the nut flush draw, but nothing else to go along with it. So I would check this one back. Okay, it's wrong again. So we can look into also spades with the ace of spades. So the nut flush draw, it wants to see bet 77% of the time. Um, so quite often um, Yeah, something you can remember and I think you just want to get value from from your From your nut flush draw. I mean if in case you hit the nut flush you want to make the pot bigger, right? That's the main reason here. We don't have enough blockers. I would say so I'll check back Here we have the nine of spades, but nothing else. I think this is weak enough to to bet like the betting strategy is very polarized. You want to bet the best hands and the worst hands and the middling hands you want to check. So in this case, we have quite a bad hand. So, okay, I was wrong. Uh, the blockers were like not enough apparently to, to bet. So yeah, as you can see, I'm making also quite, quite, a mis quite some mistakes, but yeah, it's also very difficult. So this one I would bet. We have the eight of spades, which is very nice, and a seven blocker. Um, so yeah, here we have the straight again. So quite an easy bet. Jack, Jack, seven, five. Here we do not have a spade. With one spade, I think this would be a bet, but without a spade, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, ace, Jack, six, five. We have a six. And a spade. Is this a seabed? I don't think so, but could could very well be a seabed here. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ace queen seven five. This one I would check back without a spade. Again, so as you can see, I'm still too careful here when it comes to seabetting. So yeah, I will definitely need to work on this uh, quite a bit more. So top two pair without anything. I would again check back. And that's correct. Okay, nice. Um, King high flush draw with the eight and a gut shot. This I would I would say is a C bet. Nice. Here again we have the straight, which should be a C bet. And here we have a naked king high flush draw. So here we don't want to get check raised, and we are sometimes dominated by the nut flush draw, and we do not have any relevant other blockers. So. I'm quite sure this is a check back. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, here we again have a straight, so we want to see bet this. Here we have absolutely naked aces, nothing, no blockers at all, so this is a clear check. Um, ace 1084. I would see bet this one. But again, uh, this hand doesn't want to get check raised, so. Yeah, it's very difficult to, to know this uh, beforehand, but 
yeah, Queen Jack through three is absolutely nothing. So um, Queen Jack nine seven. Um, I would go for the C bet, but yeah, again, that's that's like the same kind of hand as the other one. One pair, a gut shot, and no spade. But yeah, okay. Queen Jack six six. Bottom set, we are sometimes dominated, we don't have a spade, we don't have an 8 or a 9. This is a check back. Here we also have nothing really going on. So check this one back. Same story here. Also nothing. Same story I would say here. Nothing again. With one spade we could see that this. Um, again, with a spade in our hand I would see that, but without a spade I go for the check. And let's let's do three more hands and then we call it a day. Ace Jack 10 3. We have a 10 blocker and a three of spades. Now is this enough to go for a bet? I don't think so. I would go for a check. Again. <laughs> um, Ace King King 6. We have the king of spades and a six. So in this case, yeah, I think we can see that this it's a check. <laughs> Very difficult. So here I don't think it's enough to see about this. Let's just check it back. Yeah, okay. So we end on a good hand, but yeah, as you can see, 68% um, I did correct and 32% wrong, which is quite a lot. So yeah, as I said, I think this spot is very interesting and you can pick up quite a bit. And yeah, maybe in a study session or so, we can do some more quizzes and yeah, um, until then, uh, thank you for watching and yeah, hopefully uh, see you again soon. Bye.